is going on, football fans? Welcome into this episode of Three Man Rush with the big man himself, Jerry Ostrowski, Sarah Larson, and myself, Colt Schroeder. The show is being brought to you by SB Nation on the Buffalo Rumblings Podcast Network and is being served up to you live by Picasso's Pizza on the Buffalo Rumblings Vidcast Network. Treat yourself to the most flavorful pizza on game day. Maybe not this week. Picasso's, we are Buffalo Pizza. Shipping local and nationwide. Order online at Picasso's Pizza, not net. How are we, folks? I'm not. I, great. I'm I'm doing pretty good, man. I know. Sarah's I mean... a little frustrated, but Jerry and I seem to be doing okay. Um, I just hung out with a lot of you here a little bit ago uh, doing my show. So I see we got like Richard's in the house. What's up, Richard? You were just hanging out with me on my show. So. Yeah, I mean, Sarah's a little frustrated. Jerry's feeling yeah. loose. I'm feeling <laughs> loose. Sarah, why are you so frustrated? Well, I decided to change my flights from Saturday to today. So uh, I have not slept in two days. And I flew into Buffalo this morning at 5 a.m. Only to uh, get here and have our game be changed. <laughs> and now uh, I can't seem to find a way of uh, how the heck I'm going to get out of here to get <laughs> over to Detroit. <laughs> well, man, you so, ought to, Sarah, I think you ought to just drive over to Detroit and just stay. Just I, I was thinking of giving there and just just stay the week. Yeah, Live well, there. and that was that was the plan. I um actually had uh, talked to a few friends. We were going to um, drive over, and then I realized I don't have my passport with me. So um, the most direct way over there is through Canada, um, mm-hmm. and the other only other way is going through where it's a terrible mess right now with the, the snow. And so I'm, I, I have to, you know, I guess wait and see whether or not um, some of these flights maybe come down. Um, mm-hmm. But if push comes to shove, it looks like I might be spending about $400 for a 45-minute flight. Uh, to go over and that's a change of a flight too because I had my flight for Tuesday unfortunately I won't be able to use it so but yeah so I'm I'm you know know, sitting here in a hotel uh it finally started snowing over by the airport I spent the whole day and I'm like where is all this snow that they're talking about but it's finally started so I I have to say I'm I'm pretty shocked that we're Speaking of Buffalo canceling a game because of snow, right? Mm -hmm. You would think that that would be something that would never happen. Now, it happened in 2014, obviously. They played the Jets in Detroit was the last time that went down. Mm -hmm. But, you know, living there for 10 years and knowing how the city handles snow, it is surprising. But I will say this. Please don't, please don't pile on with the C. This is why we should have a dome. This is why we should have a roof. This game's not being canceled because of the stadium. Right. It's being canceled because of safety. Um, what people need to realize now, you know, Buffalo is a regional franchise, so people come from a long ways away to watch Bills games. Um, this weather is not conducive to that safely. Right. Um, so you have to understand, I think, that they're thinking of the fan safety first because the fan base that is the Bills Mafia they will do what they have to do to get there no matter they're, what. They're still going to do that. Yeah. You <laughs> know, somebody's right. going to show gonna, up. They're going to do that to go to, 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 uh, yeah. to make that drive to Detroit. And some of them are going to make that the longer haul because they don't want to go through the Canada or they can't because they don't right. have a passport. So they're going to make the longer haul. They're going to go the more dangerous route. And, you know, uh, it, it's one of those things that we have that passion of a fan base. You know, you have quite a few people that, could have been right there in Orchard Park and, you know, could have made it to the game. There's versus maybe a bunch that, of people like you, right? There's probably a bunch of you, right? Stuck. Oh, I, I mean, right? there's a lot of people that were like, you know, they're, they were taking buses in from, you know, like right. Virginia right. and they had a, you know, whole big thing, you know, come on, coming up. I know somebody was driving from Texas. So there's a lot of people who were planning on coming to this game this weekend. So, you know, whether or not they just make the detour and go to Detroit, it's great that we play two weeks, you know, two games in a row there. Um, you know, I'm already set to be there on Tuesday, <laughs> but you know, honestly, I guess I wouldn't normally care, but I have this little, you know, 30 game streak going right, where right. 
for me to cancel um, because of weather, it, it's just frustrating. I don't think you're going to be like Barry Bonds and Mark McGuire. There will be no asterisks next to your name <laughs> right. if you don't make the game this week. I mean, we all understand the situation, right? Yeah. No, I get it. It's. I think it's internal just in my head. And, you know, same thing because if I went back before COVID year, my streak would have even been longer. But I cut my, I cut my streak because – of COVID. So it's just been frustrating to, to do everything. And I can't wait to sleep. I'll be honest. <laughs> I cannot wait to sleep <laughs> I don't, today. I don't think that people, I don't think Sarah and, and, and Cole, I don't think people understand the logistics that go into right. clearing snow from that stadium and yeah. from the parking lot. So people can get lots, there yeah. and do what they do. I remember when my, my first apartment was literally like two miles, if that from the stadium. And you know, when the snow came, you would see the lights would be on all night long, all night, all morning long, the lights would be on. And they basically on the news, they would come on the Buffalo news and they would say, Hey, if you want to make some extra money, come mm-hmm. down to at the time, rich stadium. Yep. And, and, and we'll go ahead and you can get on the snow removal crew. I think they paid 10 bucks an hour at the time. People got food. They had food for them and they gave them tickets. Yeah. I mean, it was a great deal, right? But I don't think that people understand just how much. I mean, they would do that all week long to get this thing ready for a game. And now you're talking less than 24 hours if the snow does stop halfway through Saturday, like Sarah was talking about earlier. Um, I don't know. I could see that. It's frustrating for Bills fans, but please. And I know my dog Spence already put on there hashtag Team Dome. I yeah, get I was it. gonna bring that up in a second here. The boss man's you know, in the house, and he wanted to holler at you. I think right. real quick. And I, and I that, don't mind. I mean, you know. honestly, I don't mind it. And really, if you think about it, a dome makes sense in Buffalo, not just because of hey, we're you can use the stadium year round. You can do different things and, right. and things yeah. like that. So it makes it more of a of a of a money maker throughout the year as opposed to just during the football season, but. But this isn't a dome situation. This has to do with safety and roads and, and right. things of that Agreed. nature. So, um, so let me – can I ask you something, you know. Jerry? Actually, real quick before I ask you this question, Jerry. Uh, for all of you that are watching this, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you hit that bell. <laughs> make sure you're doing everything that you're supposed to do when people tell you to like things. Please and thank you. And make sure you've subscribed to the Buffalo Rumblings channel. All right. So, Jerry, let me ask you this question. Sarah, I need your opinion on this too because – I feel like I was nervous about this game with all the snow and everything and how it would shake out a little bit for the Bills, the way that we've had some trouble with some run teams and stuff like that. So we're coming off this bitter loss, right, where things are a little shaky. Now we're the team that's going to kind of be up in the air having to make the moving parts, right? Cleveland was already ready to travel. They're just traveling to a different place. Now we got to shift. Jerry, what's it like? I mean, for somebody that's like, hey, guys, so, yeah, this weekend we're at home. Two days later, you're like, oh, by the way, never mind. We're playing in Detroit. Is this team ready for this? Like, where are you guys at coming out of that loss? I, I think that they're fine. I think the week of practice has been the biggest issue, not the snow. I mean, we're talking about a team that not only has, has injury issues, now we have an illness issue, mm-hmm. and they haven't had a full team uh, to be able to practice yet. Looking at the injury report earlier today, there's still quite a few people on there with illness. Um, but, you know, these guys are professionals. I don't think it's that big of a deal flying to Detroit won't be that big of a deal. They're playing inside, so they're not going to have to worry about uh, packing bags differently or pulling all the stuff out differently. They're actually going to – they're probably going to fly lighter now knowing they don't have to play outside and, you know, at Hallmark. So um, they'll be fine. I don't think it's that big of a deal. Um, they've been preparing all week. My biggest issue is um, are people going to be hydrated? Are they going to feel mm-hmm. good? Are they going to be able to play four quarters of football? That would be, to me, the bigger issue than uh, we got to hop on a plane now and go to, to Detroit. And to be honest with you, it helps the Bills because they go to Detroit a, a week before they play in Detroit. Mm. They'll understand the stadium. They'll under, understand the nuances of it. And, you know, they'll be acclimated to that as well. So I just want to make sure our team is healthy. Um, right. You know, that's my biggest issue. Well, and we're 1-0 and as a home team there, so. There is that. And and Brandon Brandon Bean also said today that they were going to stay on the visitor side. So they were going to be the visitor, Mm. you know, uh, Mm. on the visitor sideline this week in the visitor locker room to get acclimated and everything. So they might bring in in store, you know, some of their stuff there too for the Thanksgiving game. But I think that it's in, in essence, it's good for the Bills because Josh 
plays very well in in the dome in a dome situation. So I think that um, would I rather see Josh playing in a dome? Yes, versus you know whatever this weather would have been. Um, you know, I know uh, Colt. You and I talked a little bit about the the running game, and you were mm -hmm. a, a little worried that it was going to turn into a you know uh, Chubb uh, massacre against us. But I think it was kind of going to go both ways, um, depending on who's healthy, who's not. I think that you know if we had uh, you know Edmonds and Milano in, I don't think they're going to run over us as much um, as you know people worry about. I think that that was kind of evident last week when Edmonds went out. But then this, you know, going the opposite way, Cleveland can't stop the run either. I mean, they let mm -hmm. Miami run all over them. And Miami, like, averages, I think, like, 90 yards per game on the ground, and they had almost 200. So, you know, it goes to show that – and that's, like, two weeks in a row they haven't been able – two or three weeks in a row they haven't been able to stop the run. So I kind of felt like it was going to play to both of our strengths. Or, yeah. well, I shouldn't say both of our strengths because it's definitely not our strength. But um, it was going to – yeah, it's Josh's strength. Right. And I joked the other day, I was like, Josh is going to have, you know, 80 yards on the ground. Um, but, you know, now he'll have, you know, 350 in the air. So, <laughs> right. This is an interesting, well, if this is factual, this is good. Last dome loss was in Arizona. So that on, a, on the hill, on the hill Mary. Right. Yeah. So that's, that's a good poll there, Jessica. Thanks. But, you know, my biggest thing with this, this game is I've heard, I listen to a lot of podcasts. I watch a lot of podcasts over the week. I watched, you know, I obviously watch Off Tackle with Fina. I watch uh, the uh, the Overaction Show, the Hump Day Show. I watch the Colt, your stuff. I watch a lot of stuff on 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 the Rumblings Network, and I hear a lot of things. Okay, we can't stop the run. Um, we have no slot receiver. Mm -hmm. uh, Dorsey can't call the right plays. Um, the list goes on and on and on and on. Right? We're I'm such still a terrible trying. Team. I'm, I'm yeah. still waiting. <laughs> I'm still sitting here waiting. Can we please talk about the elephant in the room, which is the guy that everybody's scared to talk poorly about turning the football over all the time? Oh, not me. I, the, I... the biggest the biggest run defense you can have is a team that's ahead by three scores because the other team has to pass the ball. Oh. Um, I, I just I really I mean, Tim, uh, Tim Graham, formerly of the uh, the Buffalo News is now at the Athletic, wrote a great piece about it. I mean, Josh is doing stuff unprecedented, turning the football over that he hasn't even done when he was a rookie. Yeah. Um, and I don't know what it is. I mean, is he uncomfortable with the play calls? I, I don't think so. I mean, I really don't see that big of a difference in what we're doing now as to what we were doing before. I actually think mm -hmm. Dorsey's opened it up a little bit. It's not quite as buttoned up as it was uh, under Dable, uh, Dable. So I don't know. I mean, I still, I still say this until something proves me wrong. If the quarterback protects the football, we win all these games. I just, I really, I mean, I look at that. I mean, it was, look at the Philadelphia Eagles. Everybody now all of a sudden saying the Eagles aren't the team that everybody thought they were. You know, they're not that yeah. great of a team. They did something this week on Thursday night that they haven't done all year. Before Thursday night, they turned it over three times total yep. the entire mm -hmm. season. Thursday night, they turned it over three times in one game, and they lost. Um Josh Allen, last three games in the red zone, four interceptions, previous 67, right. two. Yep. Right. I mean, it's, you know, look at Tom Brady. As much as we like to talk gas about Tom, the other day in the Tampa Bay game, he threw an interception. It was his first interception in 474 throws. Right. He was three throws <laughs> away from setting a record. Yeah. You have to protect the football in the NFL. You cannot so give I, the other team more, more possessions. So I've been on the – I've been on the – I don't want to say hate train, but I have been calling it as, as it is with, uh, with Allen. I love Josh. I, you know, he's my quarterback. He will, you know, like, but he can do wrong and he has been doing wrong right. and he needs to fix that. And I think he will fix it. Um, but someone posted, um, a great stat the other day and I wish I would have, uh, sent it to, to Colt so he could share it. But last year, Mahomes went through the same thing for the first mm. like six, seven games of the season. He had like nine or 10 in, uh, interceptions to, to kind of start the season. Um, and it's the same. It was like same touchdowns to interceptions is what Josh is doing. And last year, everyone's like, oh, he's, you know, Mahomes is still the man. He's still MVP. And now this year with, with, you know, Josh, oh, he's, he's hit his ceiling and he's, you know, regressing and, you know, he's not as good as everyone thought he was. And the, mm -hmm. the fame and the, you know, um, Super Bowl, you know, hype has gotten to him. Let's 
let him, you know, get his bearings in a couple more games. And if a couple more games happens and he's still doing this, then, you know, our season's going to be over before, uh, you know, we can complain about this further. So um, well, he gets he gets two of the worst defenses in the league the next two weeks. Right. So if it, if it falters during that period, it might be time for serious concern. Yep. But, you know, we'll see. How do I mean, you guys I'm feel with- about I want to ask you guys this because this is an interesting point here. Josh is dealing with the fame, feels he needs to go out and be impressive at all times. How do you guys feel about that? Because for me personally, um, I feel like, I don't know if you guys saw the Colin Cowherd thing, uh, but I felt like he hit the kind of nail on the head where he said that the offense kind of feels a little bit like home run or strikeout at this point. It feels like we're kind of, it's got to have, we got to have the big play. If we don't get the big play, it's like nothing happens. Mm -hmm. So is it, is it what he's dealing with outside of this and he's trying to be more, or is it something different than that, Jerry? Do you think it's just something game plan, general? Co- like, what do you think? I think sometimes the young players, when they start to really feel comfortable with what they're doing, they tend to take chances, maybe chances they shouldn't take. Um, I think you go through these these growth spurts. You know, you're a rookie and you're drinking from a fire hose, right? You're, you're sitting there trying to take all this in and you're struggling a little bit. You know, you make a flashy play here and there, but then all of a sudden as you start getting out of that rookie year in your second and third year, you start really grasping the offense. You start doing a lot of things well. You make the big play, and now all of a sudden you think you got it. And then you tend to maybe gravitate away from your fundamentals a little bit. And maybe it has to do with, you know, with with Dorsey uh, being a new OC. Maybe he speaks – in meetings differently than Dybul did. I mean, there are things like that, and it's taken Josh a little bit of time mm. to, to catch up to it. Josh just needs to continue to take what's there. Um, right. You know, there are times for the big play. The throw in the end zone that was picked in overtime was, you know, s- people, you know, some say it's a good read. I thought it was a bad read. I thought it was a bad throw. Um, you had a draw, you had a dump off to a running back. Um, that was there that you could have picked up yardage and gone. Now, hindsight's twenty twenty. If right. if the officials did their job, we never would have been in that situation that anyway happens. because Gabe Davis's right. catch wasn't that wasn't a catch. But right. yeah. still, you guys are too good. I mean, there's times to make big plays and you can do those throws, but there's a lot of times where you have to just be patient. And maybe he's lost a little bit of his patience, whether it's because the voice in the room is different. I don't know, but. I'm with you. I mean, I don't I, I think Josh Allen's a tremendous quarterback, but he'll be yeah. the first to tell you even he is up for some criticism. It's okay. Yeah. He'll he'll be I fine. Think, He's a big boy. I think patience is actually a good word for it. You know, I think yeah. that um in the beginning of the year, and I've I've said this over the last couple of weeks, in the beginning of the year, for the first few games, we were doing a lot of those sh- you know, short yarded um yardage <clears throat> passes. We were, you know, getting in the flow. We had a lot, you know, a couple of screens here. Um, it was uh, very methodical down, you know, down the, um, you know, down the field type of drives. And mm-hmm. I feel like lately we get, we put ourselves in, predic- you know, predicaments that if we're not hitting, you know, Gabe Davis for a 98 yard touchdown, then we're not succeeding. And, and that's kind of where we've gotten over the last, uh, f- you know, few games is where we always have to hit that home run, that home run, that home run. And, you know, you know, I think that he gets he gets in his head a little bit. You know, I almost think that a lot of it has to do with, you know, it's why they went out and got Hines. And you talked about it a second ago. They like to dump that ball off. They like the, the short passes. A lot of times in some of these offenses, um, you, the, the little swing pass is actually a run. I mean, they're looking at some of these mm-hmm. dump off passes and characterizing them as runs. Um you know, maybe that's why they got Hines. Maybe they don't have that back that they want to do that with. So they got him and they're trying to get him sped up so they can get him, you know, familiar and comfortable with the offense. But really, uh, you know, anybody will tell you it's just teams are too good in the league. You cannot give other teams extra possessions. And hmm. you just got to do a better job of protecting the ball. And he will. I mean, it, this is this is stuff that happens. You go through streaks. Um, but really, if you look at that game, there was a drop in the end zone and a drop on a on an out route. He could mm-hmm. have had two more picks in that game. Yeah. Very yeah. easily in the first half. I mean, half. he's and that's been kind of the the, you know, unfortunate thing the last few games is uh he's made some questionable, you know, calls. And even uh I think um Diggs had that amazing catch, uh Knox had a catch, McKenzie had a catch that 
if they didn't catch, you know, the ball, what what could have happened? Um, there was a, mm. a tipped pass by um, by Diggs that went off several people's hands before right. it finally dropped. That could have been an interception. So I think that there's, you know, been opportunities as well. But I think that he just needs, you know, we just need to kind of slow it down a little bit. We're so used to that, you know, home run or bust type thing. And I don't think we need that. I think we need to go back to what we were doing in the beginning of the, the season. And I kind of feel like we were doing that because, you know, Dorsey was getting his feet wet. Well, maybe mm. it's better to go back to that and, you know, and kind of slow it down and, and you know, run the, um, more of those plays. And we're we're down quite a few wide receivers at this point. Yeah. So, I mean, at, we got you know, four on the we, roster right now that are healthy, Sarah, this I think week. Four. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, if, if it's at this point in time, we're, we're pretty much, um, we're going to need to use Heinz and yeah. we're going to, I mean, we have to... three pass catching backs realistically, yeah. right. That are going to be our true, but you know, think and, about it. I mean, you know, obvious... Knox... go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead, oh, I'm Sarah. sorry. I was just saying Knox needs to get involved as well. Hmm. You know, if you look at this thing, and it's I, I liken it to the commercial. Have you seen the commercial where they're they're spoofing the horror movie, and the and the there's a a old barn with a bunch of chainsaws mm-hmm. and a chainsaws. running car, yeah. And the and the guy's like, "Let's get in the running car." And the girl, are you like, crazy? No, yeah. Are you crazy? Let's hide behind the chainsaws. <laughs> yeah, that's the way I see this. I mean, and, and, and granted, I get it. We're supposed to. With nothing to talk about, you don't have you don't have video pods and radio shows and things mm-hmm. like that. But it's to me, it's just blatantly in front of us and obvious. I mean, jump in the running car. It's if yeah. they just clean up a few of their mistakes, they're going right. to be fine. They're going to be yeah. more than okay. And don't, I think they'll know... be fine this week. I think. That yeah. So where are you guys at for this one? Richard yeah. says the Browns aren't the Vikings offensively, no. right? I think they're definitely yeah. a different style of play for one, right? Their quarterback is not going to sling it all over the place. They have very good running backs. Not that Delvin cook's not a very good running back, but that was Delvin cook plus some wide receivers that can make things happen. This team doesn't necessarily have that. So where are we? Are, are we going to be victorious in Detroit this week? Are we, are we feeling we're going to be yeah. getting a confident win? Is this going to be a close win? Like, what do you guys think? And Cole, uh, I'm I'm sorry. Let me add that we held them to 25 yards rushing through oh yeah, the, almost the, the end of the third quarter. Yeah, before so the big run, before the 81 yard it. run. So right. I I I feel like we can we can definitely in in last week Miami held um Hunt and Chubb to both very reasonable numbers. We can do mm-hmm. it too. I know mm-hmm. we can. I so. I think I heard Spence talking about it on the Hump Day show, and I have to I have to agree with what he said is the fact that we've got a lot of people that kind of, um, I don't know, poo-poo on the idea of signing uh, Edmonds to a long-term contract, right? Mm-hmm. Um, look what happened when he went out with the groin injury and and what happened in the Completely middle of the different. field running the football. Completely yep. different. You don't find linebackers his size that run the way he does and tackle the way he does. Um, tackling is a huge part of the game. He puts his hands on you. You're going to the ground. And I know Milano is a big fan favorite. I like Milano a lot. Yeah. He's more of a – I think Milano is more of your cover linebacker. He does make some plays in the running game because he is a sideline-to-sideline guy. But the bread and butter of their run defense up the middle is Edmonds. Because remember, you don't have a ton of size on that D-line. Um, right. They get Jordan Phillips back, which brought some size back to him. But Ed Oliver and, and those guys aren't massive individuals. And this is a problem across the league, guys. And it's it's kind of cyclical that comes through college football. With college football running a lot of spread, we don't have to have the 340-pound right. inside defensive tackles anymore. We got guys that need to be able to get upfield, beat the counter, beat the power play. And because of that, we're not getting D tackles that are really, really massive anymore. Um, look at the Eagles, what they did today. They signed two guys. One of them was and Sue right. because they're having the same issue that the Bills are having they're having trouble stopping the run. So this isn't just something that's happening in Buffalo. It's across the league. And I think the main thing with that is you're not seeing, you know, the the huge, like Jordan Davis from Georgia. He's in mm-hmm. Philly, but he's hurt. He's not playing. And all of a sudden they can't stop the run. You don't right. see those guys very much anymore because of the way offenses are playing in college. And uh, you're seeing it kind of fall into the, col- into the pro game because you don't have the the massive inside guys as you used to. Well, I think you're seeing with the Bills right now, because like like you mentioned with Edmonds, when he left, things changed. Last week when Milano was out, it was clearly evident. I don't know that they can let him go. Like these two obviously are at yeah. their best when they're together, right? Yeah. They're both good yes. and they can handle their yeah. own. 
and they can be fine on the field with somebody else, but it's clear and evident that the other piece falls off not having the other person there. So uh, exactly. it's going to be interesting, but everybody's agreeing victory. Do you, you guys want to put numbers on it? Yeah, now we, that we're not playing in the snow, I uh, I think we can cover the spread. I think that we will, um, and I think it'll be a higher scoring game. I had originally had said 17 to 6, but that was when yeah. we were playing at home. Yeah, okay. Um, so I think that it'll be uh, definitely higher scoring now. It'll be uh, – I'm, I'm looking forward to us – Getting back out there. Gas back on the again. pedal, right? Gas back on the pedal. Yeah. Just get after him. Jerry, what do you yeah. think? You anticipate this could get close at all, or do you think we we got enough here to just go and get it done? I don't I don't think that the I don't think that the Bills lose this game. I think they do cover. I agree with Sarah, but I believe that there there's still a little bit of an aspect that I that I stress about with this game. And and obviously they're flying to Detroit. We're supposed to be playing at home. I don't think that's going to be as big of a deal. Um I like, you know, I talked about this a few shows ago. Spencer Brown played last week and that offensive line looked completely different. Mm -hmm. um, can we continue to have Spencer Brown play? Are they going to be able to provide protection? Um, you know, they still do have a couple guys uh, over there in Cleveland that can get after the passer a little bit. Yep. Yeah. So, you know, they're going to have to be able to pass pro. Um, I think the Bills score over 30. I mean, yeah. this like be a 35 to 10 game. Um, yeah. I think that, but you know, they're going to have to, it takes Cleveland out of their game if they score points, right. If Cleveland can pound the football and really run it and get, you know, if they don't have to get out of their game plan, so to speak, it could be a lot tougher game yeah. for the bills, but I like the bills in this one. I'm not, I'm not too, uh, I'm not too upset about, about Here the it. If we get up 14 to 17 points, the Browns aren't coming back. Agreed. Right. They're not necessarily built to do it. Right. And our back end is not terrible, especially if we can get our man Poyer back because he's, yes, exactly. he's a game changer. Right. I mean, I don't know if you guys saw this stat, but when he plays, we're five and oh, when he doesn't play, we're one and three. The point differential is almost five whole points when he's on the field. So mm. uh, hopefully he's back uh, and maybe trade day will get his day here sometime soon. But all this talks about the NFL team that's in Buffalo that can't play a game this weekend. Well, they do have a little brother over at UB who's supposed to play a home game a day before the Bills were supposed to play. Yeah. We haven't heard anything about if they're going to play. They are falling apart at the seams. This is a, a chance for them to go up against. They're going to, up against the one and nine Akron Zips, right, for a chance to get bowl eligible. But they've been just on a complete downside. Where Do the, do the Bulls have any hope, and are they even going to play? Well, they definitely have hope against against Akron. Okay. <laughs> I, mean, I do this have was some kind interesting of like, stats for you that UB hasn't kind of their... done that great against them at certain times. So, but I, I hate to say this, and I'm not trying to be that guy, but trying to logistically get seventy thousand people in a stadium, and then probably seven thousand, I'll <laughs> right, give them yeah. ten, into a yeah. stadium is a completely different situation. Uh, one thing that the one thing that this game has flexibility with, if they have to, they can push it to Sunday. Um, you know, Akron's not that far mm -hmm. away. They're going to bust right. to this game. They can bust up on Sunday. But, um, you know, Buffalo being five and five, one game away from bowl eligibility, you would think that they would be able to close out their home schedule with a win against Akron. Um, you know, but Buffalo is let, let's. It's you just have to be honest. It's not a very good football team, you know. Gave up 304 yards of rushing last week. Um, and let him come. Thank back. goodness, yeah, Akron likes come back. Yeah, yeah. Let, what is it? Uh, was it Joe Moorhead that's the coach at Akron or at Akron? I believe used to be uh, at Penn State, and then was the head coach at Mississippi State for about three minutes. I think he's their head coach, <laughs> so they do like to they do like to throw the football. Thank goodness they don't want to run it. But um, yeah, they're gonna have I would a problem think in play, the snow then. Yeah, yeah, you're not, you're not supposed to let game. you're not supposed to let a team that you're up on beat you <laughs> running, right? Like, how's right. that supposed to happen? That's right. that's the exact I opposite. I right. know, and and it's 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 not very good, but it happened. So, and, um, and then being a Mac, you know, like they they right. changed um, games a lot. So I would not be surprised if tomorrow we find out that they might move the game to say Tuesday. Um, right. I, you know, I don't think that there would be a problem if they did. So, um, we'll find out, but if they do play, it would be actually a, a game that I would think would be fun to watch. Um, yeah. you know, well, just, exactly. uh, just because, uh, you know, UB does have 
a decent run game. So it'll be interesting to see what they can we, they can do. With well, they're a, they're a 14 and a half point favorite. So, yes, I are. mean, you should with that kind of number, you're hopefully going to see some like fireworks at least. Right. You know, somebody's going to be scoring some points. I got some numbers for you guys here. So right now, the bets and the money are on the Akron side of this at 14 mm-hmm. and a half. Okay. So Akron's covered three of their last five games. UB coming in on that two game losing streak has covered three of their last five. But here's where here's the kicker. UB has won four of the last five meetings between these two teams, and they've covered all five. So exactly. Akron's lost their last nine games. They won their first yeah. game of the season's lost nine since. Yeah. Um, I, I you know, I look for Buffalo to win this game. Um, I don't know if they cover. I, I don't, <laughs> That's a I big don't number. Really, well, I, if, I'll be honest with you, I don't think anybody snow. cares. Yeah, yeah, I don't think anybody cares if they cover. They just need one win to get the ball eligibility. And if right. you can get the ball eligibility and you're at your UB, that's a big deal. Right. That's a huge deal for them. Um, huge boost for their program. So hopefully they get it done this weekend at home uh, whenever they decide to play. Right. And, yeah. Um, it just sucks because two weeks ago we were talking about, you know, they they were going yeah, against they were, uh, right. you know, top of the action. division. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. And, you know, yeah. they, they got some decent players. I mean, the quarterback, Cole Snyder, is not bad. You know, Justin Marshall, the wide receiver is good. Um, defensively, maybe why everybody runs the ball is because Marcus Farquaugh has five interceptions. They don't want to throw the ball against him. But <laughs> yeah. but seriously, I mean, it's – they. you know, you, you went from controlling your own destiny and having a chance to possibly uh, do some things to now you're, you're scrambling to become ball eligible in two games. I think they do it this weekend. I hope they do it this weekend. And yeah. for all you Bills fans out there that don't – aren't going to go to Detroit, Sarah, if you don't we'll go to Detroit, yeah. you need to go <laughs> over and trying. see the Bulls. We'll figure it out. Set your tailgates up over there. Goes Bills Mafia. Go to Buffalo. You be support the Bulls, and uh, let's get them bowl eligible. Let's hit on a, another team that was a Cinderella story on the verge of ultimate success. But wait, it's like <laughs> you now have to poke them with a stick to see if what they're is alive. Going on with all these New York the Q's, teams, right? What's happening with the Q's? <laughs> They're a 10-point underdog going up against Wake Forest. They're both six and four. Wake's come in with three in a row. Cues have dropped four in a row. I mean, what's going to happen here? Like, this team is just like, they're not doing anything. They got cru- I mean, we mentioned last week Florida State have been putting up a ton of points against their opponents, and they went ahead and just did it again, right? 38-3. I, I, Stop I, it. I warned you guys. I said FSU yep. was going to, if, if they could not not – Establish themselves that they, the FSU was going to destroy them, and I did not. I did not feel good saying that at all. Um, but they did, and uh, unfortunately, they've just they have not looked right um, over the last three weeks. Ever since they let Clemson come back, they just have not looked like they started the season. And uh, Wake Forest is a very good team. Um, they're you know they took Clemson to overtime. Uh, they they lost, I think, only by one point um, to their, you know, for their previous uh, or, or two points to their, you know, for their previous loss, which was against UNC um, last week. So Wake Forest is a very good team. So I have a feeling Syracuse is going to um, have some trouble again, especially on the road. You know, this is a team that these two teams play each other pretty tough. Uh, last year, Wake Forest won 40 to 37. One thing about Syracuse is this. They still know how to play defense. Um, their defense mm-hmm. plays pretty well. Um, you know, I have to, and I, it's so, it's so, to me, it seems blatantly obvious. Um, when Garrett Schroeder went out and he started having issues offensively, they just, they just bottomed out. It's a team that, you know, it just shows how important quarterbacks are in college football nowadays mm-hmm. with the different schemes and the, you know, all the spread stuff they do. Um, it's just it's like they lost their running game, though, too. I can't even think of his name, but he was he's amazing. I, I literally can't think of his name all of a sudden. Right. He's well, running back. Exactly. When you well, when you have a quarterback can't throw the ball, you just stack the box and say, OK, quarterback, make, you know, throw right. the ball. And, and especially with so many RPOs going on nowadays, defenses know this. They know how to play to force the plays that they want. And, um, you know, I'm sure they've taken that runaway. Um and have gone ahead and made uh, Syracuse run the or pass the ball, excuse me. But, you know, the Q's coming in. They're all bowl eligible, just like Wake Forest, both six and four. You know, Syracuse coming in, loses their last four, Wake their last three. Mm-hmm. Um, anything can happen in this game. Like I said, I think these two teams play each other tough. I'm, I'm going to go with the home team. Uh, they're playing at Wake. Um, I think Wake Forest is a decent team. 
Um, I think that the fact that the Syracuse cannot score the football is going to be a big deal. Sarah, you, you sign with the Qs on this one or are you going with Wake? Ten points. No, I think I, I mean I think Wake is the the better team right now. Um, I think uh, even though that they've lost a couple in a row um, as well, they you know they've shown that they still have the fight at the end. I don't think Syracuse has that fight now. If Schroeder comes back, there's a diff, there's they're a different team, right. and I think that um, you know if he does come back, it'll it'll be different. But uh, they just have not been clicking since and regarding what what jerry was just saying about points the beginning of the year they were scoring like crazy and now they can't score right. anything so yeah so right now the bets are with wake forest the money's with the cues so okay. now interestingly enough uh syracuse is only it looks like played in this stadium one time in the last five years the last three meetings between these two teams have all been in the dome in syracuse hmm. so it'll be interesting to see how that uh shakes out for them this week but Enough about the little kids in the room, right? <laughs> Let's move over to the big boys, right, and see what's going on. So we got the college football playoff rankings are back out. No change at the top, right? Uh, at least the top four. Georgia, Ohio State, Michigan, TCU all remain undefeated, so they all rightfully stay where they are. Tennessee coming at five, LSU at six. How we feeling, folks? I No shocks. Um when you look at this, you, you got four teams that are 10 and 0. And that's the way it should be. All four teams are 10 and 0, should be in the top four. Tennessee sitting just out of that four at the fifth spot. Um, the team that's kind of lurking, the team that could maybe possibly jump in and spoil this thing, um, but they've got to stay undefeated is is uh is USC, is Southern California. We'll talk about their game against UCLA, their rival here in a little bit is uh, both teams have sold the Rose Bowl out. I think it's the first time the Rose Bowl's been sold out and Lord knows how long. But um, big game for them this weekend. But, you know, TCU, I believe they stay in the four if they go undefeated. Uh, if mm -hmm. they lose a game, they will not be in the Final Four. But I think if they stay undefeated, they win the Big 12. They, they will go ahead and be in the Final Four. Michigan Ohio State will take care of each other. The interesting thing is going to be, did one of those teams jump back in with one loss? I think some of that depends on what Tennessee does, because I think uh, you know Tennessee, if they get into the into the SEC final, uh, do who do they play? Do they keep that one loss? Do they lose two? So I, you know, a lot. A I don't lot think of they can. I don't think they okay. can make it into the final. I oh, think it's LS, Yeah, I think it's LSU okay. versus Georgia. I think that's okay. Said. So it is okay. Thank you for that clarification. I was not. I was not sure. So Georgia and Tennessee are on the same side. Then right? Is that correct? They're yeah. on the east. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So. Uh, I don't think Georgia has any issues with LSU. I think Georgia, I think Georgia right now is the cream of the crop. What I want to know is I want to see Ohio State play Michigan. Michigan. To me, that's going to mm -hmm. be the litmus test on how good they are. Um, so obviously um that game coming up. So I, I like I said, the team that I look at that might spoil this thing could be uh Southern Cal, maybe Tennessee, but um pretty self explanatory. Yeah. How about you, Sarah? I uh I disagree on on USC just because they have no quality wins. Now they will be playing UCLA. Um, the one ranked team that they played this year, they they lost. Um, it was um to Utah, I believe. Um, and I think it was like only a one point loss, but they still lost. So I don't feel like they have the resume in order to kind of sneak in there with the the one loss. I think that once Michigan and Ohio State figure that out, um whether or not one of them drops to, to four and they, they both still make it in. Um, I think that Tennessee and Clemson could be the two that kind of fight there. But now if LSU comes in and actually beats Georgia, then in the, um, in the SEC uh, championship, then there is going to be a whole mess because you're going to have a two loss team sitting there at four because LSU will make it in. Um but I think if Clemson beats, uh, if Clemson wins the ACC uh, and Tennessee it is still kind of sitting out there, but then when you have Michigan and Ohio State playing each other, then either one's going to fall to four or one's going to fall to five. And it's going to, it's going to open up that space for either Tennessee or, or Clemson to kind of sneak in there. Yeah, I think it's going to be hard for you to bump one of those teams out, right? We kind of just talked about that a couple of weeks ago when they had bumped after I think it was Tennessee took the loss, right? They moved them all the way out to five when 
if if Michigan or Ohio State lose to each other, you lose to the team that's just better than you in the rankings. It's hard to take that team and say they should be moved anywhere realistically, right? Because that proves that they should be basically right there, I think. But yeah. you, it, you can't – it's hard to do. That's why the playoff thing is so crazy, and that's why everybody wants to expand it a little bit, right, is because we're clearly seeing there's probably eight teams that if you gave them an opportunity – yeah, and I still don't know if TCU is as good as we want to get them give them credit mm-hmm. for yet. I uh, I I get they beat Texas, but Texas I don't think is as good as we were giving them credit for. Did you so, know? Did you um, watch that game, Sarah? I watched some of it. Everything I've been very intrigued with uh in both the the running backs and the quarterbacks with the with those two teams. So they TCU did something that nobody's ever done before. And I think in history of football is, is, is hold Texas at home to like 300 yards of offense. Yeah. It was an absolute, yeah. um, it was a dominant performance and, yeah. and, and it was much. And they only, they only scored what? 10 points. Who Texas, Texas. Yeah. I yeah. Think it was 17, like 10 or 16, 10. Yeah. It was, it was impressive for for what was done so i i agree i mean to me though if you really look at it and we we talked a little bit about it the first the the number one ranked team the fifth ranked team the sixth ranked team the eighth ranked team they're all sec teams Hmm. and and really at the end of the day you'd be crazy to think they don't want three sec teams in the final four when it's all said and done but yeah you know the the good thing about this is 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 there's still a lot of football to be played and there's a lot of things that can happen, um, but it's just uh, I think that it's hard to sit Ooh, there and say see. that TCU Who does not the hell did Ohio State beat um, everybody they've played. Yeah, I, <laughs> right, I but I, only, I know what he's saying. Yeah, no, no, I get it. I get no, it. No, but just they beat Penn State. Around. They did beat Penn State, and I think that the other game that'll solidify it will be the Michigan game. Yeah. Right, and I and I agree though. I mean, I I keep tell I keep hearing how the Big Ten is this other the second power conference. Um, I'm still, you know, Michigan State has been a dud. Probably the biggest surprise team in the in the Big Ten this year by far has been Illinois. Hmm. Uh, Illinois, uh, Brett Bielema has done a wonderful job at Illinois of, of bringing and that, that running back, back. At right? Illinois. Exactly. I can't yeah. think of his name, but but it's just like I I agree, kind of. I. I'm not so impressed with the Big Ten and 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 what they have to offer. I really don't. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be curious and, to see how it all shakes out, right? What do you got, Sarah? No, I was just going to say, I think it was two weeks ago that I was frustrated with with Michigan at four and moving into three. And I'm <laughs> and it's so I, I'm on the same page. I think that, you know, if he if they weren't undefeated, we wouldn't we wouldn't be talking about it. But they are. So you're, you know, the kind of the way we're we're, we're set, you know, set up with the playoffs is they're going to be put in the top four. But um, I don't think that they have too many of those quality wins. because Again, Michigan State is nowhere this year. And so yeah, their, their uh, conference is not the same top to bottom as the SEC correct. is. Right. I mean, it's, it's so, hard to compare to that. It'll definitely be interesting. And, and, and um, I think it was put out there today on Twitter what two teams do you want to see play? Well, at this point in time, those are two teams that I want to see play is, is Michigan and Ohio state, because I want to see, you know, how they, um, how they go against each other at this point in time. Yeah. So let's get into a couple top 25 games. What do you guys think? Sounds good. This is the one Jerry brought up about a team that could potentially sneak their way in. And if they're going to, they're going to have to win this game, right? You absolutely cannot lose this game or your thoughts and dreams of ever being in a playoff are completely gone. We got number seven USC coming in at nine and one versus the number 16 UCLA Bruins. They're sitting at eight and two. USC is the two point favorite going to UCLA. Where, where are you guys at the, on this game here? Go ahead, sir. I uh I wrote down 4138 USC is uh my prediction. I think they just cover the spread. I think that um it's at UCLA. I think it'll be a very high scoring game um between the two of them and uh it, you know, I think it'll be it'll be close, but just because it's kind of the the in-state rivalry and everything, but uh USC has more to play for at this point. If they win, then they they go into their conference championship. And they're probably still thinking in their head that they might have a chance with the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I still think that USC uh, pulls it off. You know, you look at this game, USC minus one and a half. Um, 
USC starts the season nine and one. I think this is only the second time that USC uh, has started nine and one. Uh, last time was under John Robertson, um, Robinson, excuse me. But um, Lincoln Riley, who's referred to in the state of Oklahoma as Tebow, and I will allow you guys to go look that up. I will not say what Tebow means. <laughs> you will have to go look that up. But, um, you know, Lincoln obviously has taken every piece of offensive star power out of uh, Oklahoma, out of uh, Norman, and brought them out to 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 Los Angeles. But Caleb Williams is a phenomenal quarterback. Um, 31 touchdowns this year. He's uh, thrown for – they got 316 passing yards per game. Their offense, I believe, is ranked seventh overall. Um, you know, just tremendous firepower on offense. Defensively, you know, not as good. Um, they do some things defensively uh, pretty well. Um, they do get after the quarterback. They sack the quarterback at a high rate. Um, they have a guy on their team, and you're not going to have to ask me uh, to pronounce his last name. I believe it's Tuli, uh, Tui to Pulioto or something of that nature. I really uh, apologize to his family. Um, I had it. I practiced it earlier, and I messed it up. But he's got 11 and a half sacks. 19 sacks on his career. Um, you know, he's just behind a guy named uh, uh, Kenichi Aduzi, who's had 16 and a half. I think mm. he's in the league. Yep. Um, so they do some things defensively. They're not quite as good, but ranked, uh, I think they're ranked, I think they're ranked uh, pretty low in defense, but offensively, they're going to get it done. Obviously, UCLA's got Dorian Thompson Robertson. It's funny because they do things differently. Um, this is a team where, um, you know, you think of Chip Kelly, what do you think of? You think of throwing the football, you think of Oregon, right? Uh, well, they want to run the football. And, um, you know, Robinson runs the football really well. They got Zach uh, Charbon, uh, Charbonnet uh, that, that runs it very well, too. All-purpose yards, uh, 176 yards a game, all-purpose. Um, he's rushed for at least one touchdown uh, in the past 10 games. Um, he's just a 100-yard runner in the last eight. Just a tremendous uh, weapon out of the backfield. So mm -hmm. they do it running the ball. USC does it throwing the ball. I agree with Sarah 100%. This is a set like 42-38 type game. Uh, they cover, yeah. but just cover. Um, but I think it'll be a barn burner. And it's really cool to see the Rose Bowl sold out. One of yeah. the iconic stadiums in our country, probably yeah. in the world. And um, there's not many people in it when UCLA is playing home games. But with USC <laughs> in town, it'll be sold out. Yeah, so the Sharps agree with you folks that USC is the team to play, but the bets and the money are with UCLA at the moment here. Uh, so a couple facts, UC UCS has won four of their last five, and they've covered three of those games. UCLA is coming in. They've, they've won three out of their last five. They've covered three, and USC has won three out of the last five meetings between these two teams. So have what you have. I also agree that I would tend to go with USC in this game. Uh, I think I agree with Sarah in the fact that this is more must win type of territory for them. And hopefully that'll get them where they need to go. So we got another one here. That's interesting because we're, we're staying with the, the pac 12 is really heating up here, right? They're really bunching themselves up. So we got number 10, Utah at eight and two, and they're going up against number 12, Oregon, who's also eight and two. And they got Utah as the minus two here is the favorite going on the road. Where are you folks at? Yeah, I think it's kind of interesting. I think there's uh, six teams in the top 25 for uh, for Pac-12, which is is great, but they probably won't have anybody yeah. land in the the playoffs. That's again another argument for why we should be expanding it. But um, I actually uh, have uh, another high scoring game. I think Oregon though is going to bounce back after their mm -hmm. loss to UW last week. Yeah. Um, I was very proud of my Huskies uh, for doing that. Um, I. Did not have the confidence in them to do it, but they they did win, and um, I, I wrote down uh, 45 42. So again, yeah, that game covering. was 37 34, right? That one yeah. last week. So yep. yeah, yeah, they hover yep. right so, there. So uh, 45 42, Oregon uh, again, just kind <clears throat> of uh, clearing the. Um, I actually know because Utah's the the favorite. So yeah. um, so yeah, I have yeah. Oregon um, pulling it off by three. I like it. Uh, Oregon, second-ranked offense in the country. Yep. Um, huge firepower and very, very poor on defense. Um, Utah, I mean, the thing that's intriguing about this game, you have two teams that are led once again by transfer quarterbacks. Hmm. Okay? Bo Nix, uh, the son of Patrick Nix, 
Um, started out at Auburn. He's now at, at, at Oregon, a guy that was kind of, um, you know, not a fan favorite at Auburn. Uh, he started, but was not loved. Um, was, 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 was ridiculed quite a bit, leaves town, goes to Oregon. And all he's done is, uh, is lead the, uh, or is tied for the lead in the FBS and touchdowns with 39 total touchdowns, including 14 of those touchdowns rushing, um, which, uh, leads to pack 10 and all of FBS quarterbacks. Um, you know, tremendous amounts of output by him. Then you look at you look at Utah, who's led by Cameron Rising, and um, again another Oklahoma transfer, um, another quarterback that actually came in with Lincoln Riley, yeah. and then he left and went to Utah. That was the second quarterback in a row from te- uh, Oklahoma that went to Utah. Fifty-one career total touchdowns. Um, just another guy that can throw it. He's thrown for four thousand seven hundred sixty-three yards. Um, you know, big time firepower there. I, the thing that I like about, or that I like about Utah is I like Utah. They, they, they tend to play physical football. They tend to get after it. And I think this is a game. I I too like Oregon, but I I would not be shocked if this was an upset. I like Mm -hmm. Utah. I like what they do. Um, well, it wouldn't be an upset because they're the two point right. It wouldn't be an upset. You're right. It wouldn't be an upset. It's true. You're very true. You're looking at Utah's 10th rank, which is surprising because isn't it at Oregon? Yeah. Yes. So I I got some, I got some uh, numbers for you guys here. Actually, Colt, before, before you do that, can you throw up the last comment? (laughs) Do you, that's the one you want up? I said, I saw it and I was like, okay. So I just wanted, and if you want to read it for people who listen for a 12 is stronger than week a big 10 <laughs> if you don't think that you need help lol yeah, cowboy, emoji, want... cowboy emoji cowboy emoji cowboy emoji cowboy <laughs> emoji laughy 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 i just want to say i personally think the pac-12 is probably has more teams that should be considered as stronger than big 10 at the top point. to bottom you're talking top, top to, bottom. to bottom right the yeah. problem is you yeah. can't you can't get the committee to vote that because they're not playing any top quality teams, you know, on on a national um, level that is out of conference. And that's the when you're playing just each other, it becomes a it becomes a problem. And that's my argument with both Ohio State and with uh, with Michigan is the, you know the the depth of of who they're playing. So. He, you're basically arguing with someone who agrees with you. So I just want to say, yeah. But, but Thanks again, for being I mean, here, though, Bane. Yeah. I appreciate, <laughs> I appreciate you being in the chat and enjoying yourself and giving it's, us a hard time, and uh, we enjoy it too. No, so I like it. Here. I like it. Yeah. Thanks the for problem being here. with the problem with the Pac-12, though, it's it's why Lincoln Riley left Oklahoma and went to the to to USC. It's it's a lot of high power offenses and weak ass defense. Yeah. Um. You know, historically. USC has been the team that's played the best defense out of anybody. And right now they're ranked 87th in the country. Um, yeah. Like we said, you know, they got, they can get after the quarterback a little bit, but still 97 in the country is, is terrible, but that's the MO of the, the coaches there. I think you look at the schools and that's how they play. If you could ever get a team to play both, which USC has in the past, yeah. um, next thing you know, they're winning a national championship, but, this whole entire conference is exactly what you think it is. It's it's great offense and weak defense, and then they kick off at ten thirty at night, and I want to go to bed anyway, so it doesn't matter, right? <laughs> and uh, so, and Richard yeah. Rush just said Ohio State beat Notre Dame. That was yeah. the first game of the season, yeah. I believe. Yeah. Yeah. And Notre Dame, like new coach, new every like. And Speaking I am of not, first of I, the season, I yeah. think that's why UT, Utah is ranked higher here, and they're the favorite here on the road because this is a team that was in playoff talk, right? This was supposed to be the Pac-12's best team to get them into the playoffs for the past two seasons. They open up with losses both the past two seasons in big-time matchups. This is a good football team. So just to give you guys the numbers real quick, bets, money, sharps, everybody's with Utah, right? Utah's won four of their last five, but they've only covered two of those games. Oregon's won four of their last five, and they've covered four of those games. Utah's won three out of the five meetings between these two teams, and they won twice last year when they played them. The last wow. time that Utah won in Oregon, 2015. <laughs> so right, they don't so play well. <laughs> they, don't, they, don't, they, don't, they don't play well at Autzen Stadium. 
Um, at that yep. time, Utah was number is ranked 18th, and the Ducks were 13th, and they won 62 to 20. That was my so, next number. Is Utah yeah. is one in three away this season? There and you go. Oregon is four and one against the spread at home. Yeah. So I think that tells you a little bit about it, especially when you're going two points. I think a lot of people would want to run with the home team there, right? So. Very cool. Hey, everybody that's been hanging out with us tonight, if you haven't already, please like, smash the button, hit the bell, do all that good stuff. Share this around to all your friends. If you like what we're up to, make sure you're following Jerry O. You know where he's at. It's right there on the screen. For those of you listening, Ostrowski underscore big O on the Twitter. Make sure you're hitting up at Sarah underscore Larson, and that's L-A-R-S-O-N on Twitter. And I am at Colt Schroeder. And that's at Colt underscore Schroeder on Twitter. I hope you guys enjoy what we're putting out for you so far in the first three shows of the three man rush. So and go ahead, Jerry. We talked about the snow to begin with. Yeah. And we had talked about, we were going to get into before this whole thing got blown up. Oh, we're yeah. going to talk a little bit about snow games. I've got three stories real quick for you. Go for that it. I think that are, uh, that are interesting snow wise. Um, first story was, we were playing in St. Louis one time and St. Louis was, uh, they were still, you know, the Rams were in St. Louis. They're still there before they went back to LA. So we, we, uh, we beat the Rams and there was a thing that would happen in the locker room. Anytime John Butler and Marv Levy showed up together, usually that wasn't good. Okay. <laughs> usually that wasn't good. So we're in there celebrate, you know, we're having a good time and all of a sudden we get called up and John, and Marv are standing together, and we're like, oh, boy. And uh, so they proceed to tell us, they're like, look, Buffalo Airport is shut down. We can't fly home. And we're like, well, hell, yeah. We, we're in St. <laughs> Louis. We just won. This is getting ready to be good. We're going to stay in St. Louis, right? So everybody's fired up, and they're like, so here's our plan. We're going to fly to Niagara International Airport. I'm like, where's Niagara? Like, no, I'm like, Niagara Falls. They're like, yes, we're going to fly to Niagara Falls and spend the night. And I'm going, you know, isn't that like 20 miles away, 25 miles away? <laughs> and But this kind of an illustration, I talked about this stuff on local radio today, the illustration of Lake Effect Snow and how crazy it is. Yeah. And Sarah, you made that comment to start with, and I was going to eventually get to it. Orchard Park's 25 miles away from downtown, right? Downtown might get 72 inches. Orchard Park might get three. Right. I mean, it's it's lake effect so crazy. So we end up spending the night in Niagara Falls and then bust in the next day. And all the stadium workers were out there, uh, were out there shoveling. They had already cleaned paths to our trucks. And I just remember having a dodge at the time, and the snow was up to the bottom of my mirror. So that's the first story. Second story, um, we're at practice one day. We come in from practice. They call us into the meeting room. Same thing. Marvin John are up there. And they go, okay, here's the deal. If you live north of the stadium, you can't go home. If you live south of the stadium, you can go home. And I'm like, what the hell do you mean you can't go home? They And they had obviously, they, they like if X snow hit the north side, shut everything down. Uh, police were like, if you're on the road, we will pull you over, commandeer your vehicle, and drop you off at the nearest place so somebody can, whatever. Like, right, so... That was so we actually went and hung out. At, you could either stay at the stadium on cots and they were going to buy pizza or you could find a place to go. And Alex Van Pelt was nice enough to take some of us in. And then we snuck home the back way uh, about 10, <laughs> 11 o'clock at night on back roads to we get home. And then the, yeah. yeah. And then the third was <laughs> the only other time that uh, snow had affected a game with us was um, we played Denver one year and Denver actually did not fly into Buffalo until the morning of the game. I think they got into Buffalo about 10 o'clock because hmm. the, the Denver had a blizzard and um, they actually went and I believe it was Jason Elam was the kicker. Uh, one of the people in the neighborhood took their snowmobile, got him at his house and snowmobiled to the nearest road and somebody swung by and picked them up and got them to where the uh, airport was so they could fly out. So those are my three snow stories, but Lake Effect Snow is no joke, man. People don't get it. They don't understand it. I had diagrams drawn up today for friends. and I don't know if you everything. can see out my window. Yeah. There was no snow there literally an hour and a half ago. And yep. now it is like it probably, you know, eight inches at least. And when, so, the, when, the, when the thunder snow comes, that's even going to be crazier, right? 
Yeah, yeah that was in Colden wow, and Boston yeah. area already earlier because yeah. uh, Tyler Dune was talking about that. And that's right, we're in the area that he's around right. and that he was saying that was hitting earlier before we even got into this. So it, it's the shark NATO is coming. Or this, it's going to be the snow nato this one is and bring up all this crazy uh, stuff out of lake well, erie or something i'm glad i made it to the store when i landed i the first thing i did was i because i had left my rental car at the airport from from the game last weekend and so i got my rental car went right to the store grabbed some stuff because i knew that there was a potential i would not be getting out for the next day or two yeah and uh now now i my rental's a little prius so I will not be going oh, anywhere. Um, I will be lucky if I can figure out how to return the Prius after right. I dig it out because I'm sure it's already probably buried. Yeah, you, you got, like, it's you in a parking some, lot over there. Yeah. Yeah, you got some friendlies up there, right, that'll come get you out of the hotel. You're not oh, going to be yeah. locked up in there, right? Yeah. No, I have, yeah. I've had a couple of people already reach out and, you know, they said that they would bring me to their house if I don't want to sit here in the hotel and stuff. So we'll see how it goes. Right I got on. my Netflix downloads and, and everything else. And it might actually be kind of fun to just relax yeah. and not have to worry about anything. Sometimes chilling ain't at half bad, right? You know, <laughs> just relaxing, hey, hey. so. She's chilling, all right. She's chilling. Yeah, she's chilling it, big time. I, have, I have the yeah. heat on in the yeah. room and a yeah. hoodie. <laughs> it's cold. Yeah. I love it. Well, Sarah, stay safe up there. Thank we you. hope exactly. that you figure out a way to get there. Jerry, sir, enjoy sense. watching your Tulsa boy this weekend in their big show down again this well, week. We're, we're actually tomorrow night. And yeah, you know tomorrow, right? Friday. 38 Maybe. degrees if it's that. So we got cold down here, too. I like oh, wow. it. Bringing the snow to Oklahoma. Let's yep. do it. Very cool. And of course, we love our Buffalo Bills. Hopefully, they'll pull out a victory this week in the Detroit Ford Field, our second home, uh, where we dominate one and oh, baby. It's only fitting. <laughs> hey, hey, just remember who was from Detroit. That's right, Ralph, baby. Ralph Wilson Sr. You know, it's only fitting we play in Detroit. It's where we get back on track, right? Let's get it back Ralph, on track. We'd rather be than right here, right now. That's it. That's It'll right. be that. <laughs> right. Appreciate you guys listening in, Jerry. Thank you, sir. Sarah, thank right. you very much. All you listening, we appreciate you. And of course, go Bills. Go Bills.